Hello everyone, Mark here, Mark's Max Muscle, and we have a presentation for you guys today, a very special one, if you ask me, and I suggest you get a protein shake ready, and maybe lots of water, because this is going to be a, it's going to be a long one. Who has the greatest lag development in bodybuilding history, and I am not talking best quads with no hamstrings, glutes, or calves, things of that nature. We're talking complete legs. And obviously, this is Tom Platts. And this is as good as ab and thigh pose as you're going to see, ever. Even probably today, and today's standards. And as you do go through the poses, this would be, I guess, a front relaxed, or maybe even a front double bicep. Certain bodybuilders hit certain poses differently. I mean, there's there's no disputing that Tom Platts is the greatest, the greatest of all time, as far as the lags are concerned, simply because there was nobody around at that time that could match him. I mean, even from the side, the, these quads from the side, guys, these are darn near unbeatable, like I said, even for today's standards. But when you turn around, from behind, this is where Tom Platts would be getting ripped off. Their hamstrings weren't really diced, I guess. First of all, they didn't train to get that look. But speaking about glutes, and I don't want to hear anybody saying that Tom Platts didn't have glutes. Take a look, guys. Clearly, you can see some glutes. So he was the king of lags. Now, there was also a gentleman that stood next to Tom Platts, and he is worth mentioning. I like to do a little bit of a historical thing on this, but really, Tom Platts was the first man to say, you know, take a look at these legs. But it's clear to me that Chris Dickerson, I mean, this guy had some complete legs. Like I said, this competition, or if it is a competition, it's going to be going through the history it's about who had the most complete legs. Chris Dickerson. I hear comments or I see comments. Nothing special about Chris Dickerson. Are you kidding me? Take a look at those wheels. Unbelievable. Calves included. But let's uh, get our head on straight, guys. Nobody is defeating Tom Platts. Actually, you could compare Tom Platts with this set of legs here. Play a guessing game if you want. Do you know who this is? Barry DeMay, Barry DeMay, and I still think Tom Platts is the king, <laughs> uncrowned king, or maybe even crowned king, turn around, and I mean, what do you guys think, I think Tom Platts is winning, might not be as big as Barry DeMay, and Barry DeMay, I believe he is known as Quadzilla, but that's debatable, that's debatable, and the man next to him also known as Quadzilla, if I'm not mistaken, now glute for glute, the guy from 1981 is defeating the guy from 1994, if you can imagine that. And not to mention, from the side, Barry DeMay has nothing on Tom Platts. Tom Platts, like I said, guys, he is basically the, the crown king, greatest lag development of all time. Is he the best? Well, you venture on into the 1990s. And there was guys so big and so conditioned. They really introduced the striations and the glutes. And this guy here, anybody guess who it is? Anybody at home? It's Paul Dillette. Paul Dillette. Unbelievable balance. And from the front, no slouch. And that is an understatement. I mean, talk about balance. Calves. Even from the front, the calves are just unbelievable. From the side, Paul Dillette, hey, he ranks up there with just about the best, the very best. But let's face it, guys, in the 1990s, there was herds of good, complete legs, like these three Hostetler studs, and I am sure, oh gosh darn it, 70% of you guys know who these three dudes are? It's Nasser, Elson, Body, Sean, Ray, and Dorian. The Shadow Yates. I could have been a singer if I had a better voice. But anyway, enough about that foolishness. Turn around and these guys are also no slouch from behind. I mean, glutes. 
week for Nasser Elson body. So really, he's not going to win the competition of uh, who has the most complete legs of all time. And Sean Ray may be a little bit weak in the calves. And Dorian, hey, he might be falling uh, last in line. Out of these three Hostetlers, and to be honest, from the side, Sean Ray may actually have the best balance of display. Quads, hamstrings, glutes, and of course calves. And really... Not that impressive. There was a dude, late 90s, early 2000s, even up to the mid 2000s, and these are his quad developments. Does anybody know who he is? This is Paco Bautista. Paco Bautista. Bautista. Fantastic lag development, and from the front, no slouch at all. I mean, not too many people have heard about this guy. Maybe not the most aesthetic as far as the upper body, but this video totally eliminating the upper body whatsoever. And from behind, this is where I think Paco would pretty much defeat anybody that we mentioned from the 90s. Nobody had hamstrings like this. The guy had a decent set of calves, maybe not the best, so to speak. And glutes, glutes, hey, ranked right up there with all of them. But then... If you're in the 2000s, you can't ignore the king. Yeah, buddy. So let's see how this Paco, Paco Bautista stands up against the king. And I gotta say, he is much shorter, so I did size it correctly. Things of that nature. I didn't, you know, make the, all the legs the same length. <laughs> That's why he's the king, guys. From the side, and this is maybe the most vulnerable spot for the king. And I don't know, that's debatable. Maybe because of the calves. But his calves aren't what you would call weak. They're just not the greatest of all time. But he is just just flatlining a guy like Paco Bautista. And from behind, those extremely fantastic hamstrings and pretty darn good glutes, I would say, for Paco Bautista, if you're comparing him with the 90s guys, he is just getting demolished here and like i said calves calves of ronnie not too bad so i mean as the smoke emerges from i say the mid 2000s ronnie coleman's the greatest of all time but then you gotta consider jay cutler that's right guys whenever these two guys stood side by each hey sure coleman was destroying him but the 2009 Jay Cutler, I think he was just a cut above all other versions, at least for the most part. There is one or two maybe poses. There are at least one pose, the front double bicep, I guess. If you're, if you're going to do front shots, this is the front relaxed. And it's debatable. It is debatable. Balance, of course Cutler has it. Quad separation, Cutler has it. I mean, the feathering, but just sheer size. Coleman is very difficult to beat, guys. Let's face it. Now, here is, like I said, that front double bicep pose. If you're going to do this, I'll do a, a couple of front shots and maybe even an abs and thigh pose with one quad in front, but maybe not for all of them. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see how it pans out. And this is a front double by from 2001 for Jay. And I gotta say, I don't know, balance-wise, he looks good. He has a few of those goodies, feathering, that I really appreciate. I'd like to have the greatest legs of all time to at least have some feathering. You know what I mean? But I don't know. I don't know. It's a, it's, it's a big size difference. Go to the side development. And trust me, these guys around the same height. Coleman a little bit taller, but his legs were so much longer and Jay Cutler had a much longer torso. So, you know, that length is actually going to help you. Because, you're, you're, you know, your legs are going to be bigger. Quads? I think Cutler's much better. He has muscle on top of muscle. Unbelievable. But guys, this is going to be debatable till the end of, end of time. Because when you turn around, I think Coleman would be... Always defeating Jay Cutler. The glutes, the hamstrings, even the quads from behind. 
Jay could never touch that, as far as conditioning is concerned. And this is a pretty darn good Jay, guys. This is a very good Jay. 2009, I mean. The guy was as strided, dry as you're ever going to be. But it could be debatable. Could be debatable. When you turn back around, and this would be, I guess, the abs and thigh pose. Coleman really does look very good, guys. And it would be very difficult to defeat him. So, Jay may look better. As far as the crisp feathering, which I do like. But Jay, or but Ronnie Coleman rather, he's so gosh darn big and he's the king. But with all due respect to those guys, I mean, they were the best feud. The two, you know, the, the greatest rivalry of all time. But then as you ventured into the later 2000s, you had these two creatures. And like I said, with all due respect to Jay... Ronnie, we're just going to say that they were the greatest for their generation. And I think these two guys were perhaps the greatest of their generation in Phil the Dr. Heath and the Predator, Kai Green. Kai, much like Ronnie Coleman, so gosh darn big. Phil may have better balance. And I, I handpicked different versions, the best of, you know, the shots that I'm looking for go to the side shot and Phil his hanging hamstring here unbelievable now when you did compare when you actually do compare 2014 Olympia pitchers Kai is devouring Phil from the side I don't know if he lifts his leg up higher or makes his leg look a whole lot bigger or maybe Phil crouches down a whole lot lower but from the calves to the quads maybe not the hamstring but I mean Kai is Eh, he's outclassing Phil. Turn these two dudes around, and this is of some debate. I used a Shiru Classic 2011 here for Kai. He was not as most conditioned at all, but he was so huge that I wanted to show it. He was so huge. Now, bring on a 2012 Kai Green. Now, he was peeled. Lost a lot of size, mind you. So I don't think he's going to be as big as Phil in this comparison. Phil's hamstrings, fantastic. But Kai has, you know, genetic favors. It looks like a great big raisin that got squished on the back of his hamstring. It looks huge. And I've never seen his glutes quite so peeled. Like I said, calves, very good. Almost a toss-up, though. Phil's are a lot lower. Kai's are a lot more defined. So it could be as of a debate. I like Kai. Go to, uh, like I said, the abs and thigh pose. And Phil pretty much, you know, he had no pizzazz, no flavor. And I like when they hold one leg forward. And you want to see some feathering. And I think this is the icing on the cake. I do believe that Kai Green, perhaps the greatest, or not the greatest, the best complete lag development of all time. But we're forgetting. There was a dude in 2009. That's right, guys. You can see him here. And I went through the photos from what you can see. And he was destroying Jay Cutler in the lag department. This is Branch Warren. And he is the, you know, the Texas rattlesnake, whatever you want to call him. He's unbelievable, guys. Very underrated. Take the upper body away, and he is maybe the best of all time. Now compare him with Kai, who I think was better than a little bit better than Phil. I do believe. And size-wise, Kai, still big, you know, a little bit bigger, I think, than Branch. But Branch, he's got so much more feathering, even in this just relaxed position. Now Cav for Cav. Kai could be in some serious trouble here. Turn to the side. And Branch Warren. You look at the pictures from 2009. Branch versus Jay. And he was eating Jay up as far as the wheels are concerned. That's not the bodybuilding competition itself. But when you take the upper body out of the equation. Glutes. Hamstrings here. Calves. 
and Kai has some of the best calves from the side. Branch is just so huge. His bone structure, bone makeup for his, his calves is just unbelievably monstrous. And I'll show you what I mean. Turn around for the back development. Branch Warren, if you've ever doubted this guy as far as the calf size, take a look. This is just obscene. Obscene. Hamstrings just hanging off the guy. And glutes. He is as dry as I've ever seen any bodybuilder. Quads from behind? Seriously? Seriously? This is unbelievable, guys. Branch Warren, if you didn't realize, he is... He's good. He is good. This is a... This is an absent thigh, and with all due respect to Kai, I did go with a little bit of a leaner version of Branch Warren, but you know what? I think it's too late. I think Branch, in my eyes, is just too much for Kai. Now, in this comparison, I used, you know, maybe the best version of Kai, as far as his wheels are concerned, size, striations. But for Branch, personally, I like this. I like this. Go to the the last pose, and this is going to be the last say on this, guys. Branch Warren, just full of striations, feathering, and if it was any doubt, even hamstrings from the front. Just, and if it was any doubt, look at the calves. Look at the calves. And Kai, no slouch at all, but... Ring-a-ding-ding. If you are looking for a one single person who is the best, I mean, the greatest still is going to be Tom Platts, but the best, I do believe, would be the quads of Branch Warren, and that's just because that's this pitcher. Hey, quad for quad. Platts still might get him. But all angles, guys, Branch Warren. I mean, you can see the, the hanging hamstrings even from this pose here, and quads on top of quads, feathering. And of course, from behind, unbeatable. I don't see anybody defeating this. Some may argue Phil Heath. Some may argue Kai Green. But in my opinion, I think it's Branch Warren. Hey, why didn't I use this pose for the abs and thigh? Was that just to respect Kai Green? Maybe. I think if I used this one, it would have been a total blowout. Look at those calves. They look like a big queen termite. A queen termite. You know how they get all swelled up? That's... Ugh. The calves, they look oversized, but then the uh, the upper leg is just... It matches it. It's un unreal, guys. And I think this picture here, you know, tells it all. Branch Warren. Best legs of all time. Let's not forget, Tom Platts is the greatest also. So... Anyway, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. It took me a long time. You may have noticed my video... Production has been down a little bit. Took me a while to go through and, you know, find, uh, find a good decision on this one. And I hope you guys are happy. Have a great day.